thanks, thanks. So there are, there are quite many of you and thanks for coming. Even though I'm a kind of person who would prefer to tell that 40 times to each of you individually rather than deliver talk. Delivering talk is not, talks is not what I do on the daily basis, uh, but it is something new for me and I believe that trying new things is important when you're a product manager. What can help in doing that role? But before I move, let me ask you, how many of you are not doing product role and are considering that? Okay, good, good. So I targeted correctly. <laughs> are you a match then? Can you, can you be a good product manager? As you probably know, there are a lot of studies, books, articles about your personality. There are tests also, where after answering 154 questions, you can be classified as one of the character. For instance, visionary. That sounds fitting, right? Fitting for product role. And uh, because visionary, so someone who provides the vision for the product and so on. And, but there is a chance that your classification, your label, does not fit that. So what then? My recommendation, please don't bother. Please don't bother because you can be a good product manager, a great product manager. And why I am so convenient about that? Because we need many different types of product managers. First of all, the market is huge. The market is huge, there are a lot of companies and a lot of products, and they differ a lot between each other. Just to provide you some examples, we have huge corporations and we have small startups. We have the products that are written from, the, from nothing, Greenfield products and the one that are more in maintenance mode even. We have products in used internally and those hitting the market. We have companies overinvested and those which are on savings, looking for savings. And we have also different kinds of engineers. We have those which are very focused and caring about long term. And we have external providers. In all of that, you need to address relationships products, their vision, their roadmaps differently, and you need a different set of characters. So you can find your place in that market, that growing market, also growing in Poland, which is good, because product managers are people who are not only executing the decisions, but also taking them. So if you can be a great product manager, what is, what is the challenge? As a product manager, you will be, or you are, placed centrally. Centrally in organizations. Inside organizations there are many processes and probably you will be also placed centrally within them. Which is great. This is what, what I love about that job. Is that you have a chance to wear so many hats. During your daily work, you will touch many aspects of the companies and you will have chances to learn many new things and learn and work with many people and with a bit of luck like in Ocado <laughs> you can also to some extent define your role you can choose which hat fits you most which you like the most and you can specialize with the area that appeals you the risk which is coming with all of that is that you will work with people who have also their work and they will try probably to interact you, which is good, to perform their own job and how to manage that, how not to, do, uh, how not to go for the risk of changing the most thrilling part of this work. So working with people with the sensation that you're surrendered, that you're overwhelmed with too many requirements for what you need to do. Let's start with hard skills, whether they can help. So 
many of job posts have the information that it's good to have technical background. Of course it's good. Is it essential? Is it absolutely needed? My experience tells that not necessarily. If you work with the company where you have good engineers, you have people who expertise in that area. And it is important that you do not steal their job. First, because let them shine, let them do it. And secondly, probably you will never be on that level. What is important is that you understand technology from the big picture, you understand its limitation, you understand the impact of technology on the product, but not necessarily you need to be tech expert. What about the second, uh, the other perspective, so the business perspective. I know some people who went this way, so they became product managers because they were great in the domain and because of that they were natural fit for starting that job. It helps, of course, but again, it is not something which uh, should be the blocker of becoming a product manager. What is important is that you ask good questions, you want to understand it, and this is the core value for product manager, not necessarily the knowledge itself. Also, remember that business people are usually those who will love to sell you their point of view, because probably they have some interest when interacting with you. Me, five years ago, when I, will join, when I was joining Ocado, I had some technical background, but not as much as we have advanced technology in Ocado, robotics, warehouses, and so on. I had very limited knowledge about retail business, about, uh, about automations, and so on. It took some time, and it was worth. Sometimes it's even better not to have uh, knowledge before, because then you can learn from the, uh, from the beginning without any, uh, any spoilings. I would like to touch more soft skills, which I think are crucial. And I will start with the something which I believe is the most important, curiosity. The one that killed the cat, right? Wrong. Curiosity is something which we need to have this desire for knowledge. Because you may know or not know, but you need to want to get to know things. And sometimes, sometimes you need to be even more curious than it is expected for you. Just to ask more questions, but it is needed. To understand the bigger picture, to understand some small things, to understand things which are behind the official notes. And talking about official notes, I would like to put a very weird <laughs> skill, which is chatting, gossiping, maybe. Gossiping has this negative uh, understanding, but in psychology there is such thing as positive gossiping, because gossiping and chatting with others is something which made us humans. It is socially needed skill to be updated about things, about situations, about others. This is what made our grand, grand, grandparents survived because they were better in living in the societies. You need to remember that official notes, mails, communicators, channels, there are a lot of those, but they will never be at the same level of presenting intentions, the feelings, as the people can be when you talk with them. Talk with them on about their work, but also talk with them about personal life sometimes, to understand what's happening, what's happening in the team, what's happening in your peers' life, and so on, to get to understand what is the situation, generally speaking, and where is it going. The next one is less controversial, empathy. Well, it is the skill needed for everyone. But for product managers, it is absolutely needed. Why? Because by definition, empathy is understanding and sharing feelings of another. And if, you, if we take it word by word, understanding and sharing is what you do, is your job number zero. But feelings, as I mentioned previously, sometimes it's even more important than official notes and information given. And another, the other is the person who we usually talk, who we usually name stakeholders. And managing stakeholders is what we need to do 
and the product managers. And now what? <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's right. A bit of laziness. I put that to draw your attention to important thing, important risk. Choosing that role probably you would like to satisfy many people, to change the world a bit, to change a product. And there's this risk that you're going to be overwhelmed. There's this thing that if you cannot say no, your yes means nothing. And it is much more difficult as it sounds. Every person in the entry level had such problem. Because we want to be nice to other people, we want to do as much as possible. But it is important not to not to step on the cables. It is important <laughs> not to step on the cables. <laughs> it is important. It is important not to move even. Okay, so uh, <laughs> it is important to know that your time is very valued. I like to think about a bit lazy people as uh, as of those who value themselves and their time and their energy that much that we don't throw into every work that is there because there's always more work. It is important to choose what you would like to do and what is really what really matters. And it is important to give yourself a bit of slack time. For instance, for dreaming, daydreaming, those short periods of time during your life when you let your thoughts drift away. Why? Because being, of course, very, very realistic about what's right now and where, what we can do right now in the roadmap, backlog, and so on. When creating the future state, it is great to think big, to think where I would like to be, where the, how great product would like, where it can be. So to think about the things which are maybe not realistic right now, but can be achieved somewhere there in the future. And to have a patience. To have a patience, and this is also something important because there are a lot of things, as I mentioned, you will touch many areas, but not everything depends on you. And big, real big things are not happening overnight. This is daily routine sometimes, step after step. You will not notice that always. But if only you did a good job on filtering what's important and giving your, yourself a time to think about the direction in which you're going, then you will need to prove a bit of patience, also to be the stable person proving, for instance, engineer team, that we're going into that direction. And even if it's not running, usually things are not happening as fast as we would like. Delays are normal. Okay, delays are normal. Just be patient and know that the good is coming. The last one, the only one, trait of character. Well, before I tell that, be a bit of lazy, daydreaming, and so on. And now I'm do putting doer on a, on a slide. But what I'm trying to say and repeat here, that if you filtered out, if now you know what's important, and you want to do it, and you know where you're going, also have this mood, have this approach of achieving things. It will help a lot you, it will help team, engineers team a lot, and will also uh, be a good for the moral of the works that you're progressing. Cutting work into pieces that can be noticeable, that you can see the progress is very important part of product manager role. Wrapping up, basically, and I would like to finish with, with, with a thought that I said a lot about interacting with others. There's a lot of effort in the world to make people replaceable, basically, right? But with those soft skills and many others, you can try to, to fight it and to make, to show yourself as a people, as a person to other people, to get to know them and make it the work, progressing and so on, not only nicer, not only more friendly, but also more effective. Thank you. <laughs>